Welcome to the Dave's World YouTube channel. If you'd like to learn more about Project Cruise Missile, just visit the Dave's World YouTube channel and check out the playlist Cruise Missile or Cruise Mods. You can learn about the project that I've been doing to this car from beginning to end. There have been quite a bit of modifications. Some of them you could pick up just in this little teaser. I appreciate you checking this video out and hopefully you stay tuned for some future footage. I know it seems weird that I'm talking into a camera asking how you guys are doing, but truthfully, it's because you take the time out of your day to comment. Those of you that saw the video about my dad taking his life, I really appreciate all of the comments everyone left me and all of the emails. Some of you have my cell phone, the text messages, the phone calls. You guys are amazing. I put that video up because I really wanted to help somebody who was getting down. And the feedback I got was exactly what I was looking for. It actually helped some people even talk to their own parents that they haven't talked to in a long time. And I thought that was amazing. And I truly appreciate everybody who supports the channel and supports me. Thank you very much, everyone. If you're interested in what I said, I'll put a link right up here in the corner so you guys can click and watch the video. I don't want to keep talking about it on all of my other videos, but I do want everyone to know that if you're in a dark place and you want someone to talk to, please comment, please email me, get in touch with me. Even though I like to do car things, I don't mind having a conversation, especially if it's going to change your life. So please contact me if you need help. Now, before I posted that video, I posted a video about an intercooler design that I came out with for the uh, 2016 and a half to 2019 Chevy Cruze. What I decided to do today is I was doing a couple tweaks on the car because Bad News Racing sent me an email telling me that the data log I sent them after the recent tune file, which gave the car more power, they were telling me I could actually get more boost out of the car now. So I'm gonna tweak my wastegate actuator. Now, the wastegate actuator, this is the one that I sell on my website as well. This wastegate actuator I can adjust the preload. So once I adjust it a little bit more, I'll be able to get a little bit more boost and the tune is set up for that boost. So I'm excited to see what I'm gonna be able to get out of the car. So the intercooler has given me a lot of positive upgrades, a lot of extra things that I can get out of it. The extra airflow helped the car get more power and now because there's more airflow, I can run the supercharger up a little bit more to create more boost. Uh, I also wanted to show you something else. I have an upgrade coming out. You can see them hiding in there. They're not fully attached yet, but I have a dual fan upgrade. Now the dual fan upgrade is for two reasons. People who drag race want some extra airflow when the car is sitting in the pits. The nice thing about sitting in the pits too is the way the intercooler is designed, you could actually put bags of ice on top of it and ice the intercooler in between runs. For you people that are in hot states, you know, I'm in New Jersey, so it's only really incredibly hot, like four months, maybe two months out of the year. Uh, and when I say incredibly hot, I'm talking 90 degrees plus. But for you people that are in the West Coast, uh, California, Texas, well, Texas is sort of in the middle and the West Coast, uh, you know, Nevada, lower half of California, it's hot all the time. You know, a cold day would be 80, but you have some temperatures that can get up over 100 degrees, 110 degrees, 120 degrees. Uh, so I've been designing a cooling fan system uh, for you guys with some of my subscribers. So if you're in a situation where it's always hot, you can do the cooling fan upgrade and you'll be able to tap right into the uh, fuse panel box. So what I want to do is make it so you can literally just pop it in. Cooling fans work and you don't have to do anything else. Mount them to the front of the intercooler, run the wire right to there, done. Uh, you might have to do your own ground, which... I'll explain where to use a ground once I'm finished with the system. The other thing I'm going to be doing is uh, some of you have requested they just want the intake piping from the intercooler up to the throttle body. So what I've been offering is just that piping. I have a lot of people who just want that. It's either because of looks or you did something with your intake manifold and because of that now you have to modify your factory system and while you're in there you want to upgrade. So I'm going to be selling just this from here down to the intercooler. 
You'll also be able to run methanol injection. I'm going to be adding ports to these pipes. You'll get the bracketry. You'll get all the clamps, the hoses. You can choose colors. There's going to be a lot of cool stuff. So that'll be on the uh, DavesCarStuff.com, or you can message me directly. Uh, you can comment, and I'll give you a link. Uh, there will also be a link below. The other thing I want to show you, too, is I'm going to show you how to properly cut an elbow. That way, if you have to tweak an elbow or make it shorter because you put some kind of spacer maybe, and now the elbow is going to hit and you have to make it shorter, I want to show you how to do that so it's nice and clean so you don't have any problems. So what I want to do is we're going to cut the elbow. I'm going to change the preload on the turbo. Then what I'm going to do is do a series of videos showing how the intercooler is treating me and just updates along the way so you guys can see how it performs. Also, you'll notice I changed my intake system and added a PVC system. This catch can design is something I came up with. Uh, it's pretty heavy duty. I have another video coming out after this video and uh, it'll show you how we did that. And also I changed the cold air intake because I have a big turbo coming in the mail and it's just a matter of time when it arrives. I'll be doing a, a turbo upgrade and methanol so you guys can see how much more power I get out of the car from doing some more major upgrades. So I'm turning this car into a heavy hitter in the cruise world and hopefully in the four cylinder manual performance world, the JDM world, uh, this car is going to be considered a heavy hitter. So, uh, okay, well, I want to show you how to cut the couplers, then I'm going to change the preload. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is this would be a typical elbow. This would go basically up to the throttle body. You can see it, it's right here. But when I send the kit out, I cut these down anyway. But let's say you modify something, you add a spacer, and this needs to be cut down more after you receive it from me. It just doesn't quite fit, and you want to cut it down, but cutting these things is a little bit of a nightmare. Uh, if you don't do it right, they kind of fray, they kind of get jagged, and sometimes you cut it too much, and now it'll pop off because you're not getting a good connection. So what I would normally do is I would put this clamp on, Okay, the clamp is on. Now you can see I can rotate this clamp. What's gonna happen now is putting the clamp on here is actually gonna give it a line to cut. It's gonna add strength to the hose because if you look here, when you push, the hose crushes. Now the hose really won't crush, it adds support. So you just take a nice sharp razor blade. Now this one's a little dull, so I might struggle a little bit. But if you take a nice sharp razor blade, and you let it do its job. You'll see that if you keep the clamp in place, you'll have a nice line for this razor to cut on. Now, if you get to a point where the clamp has this basically stepped out part, this is why I wanted to make sure you can rotate it. All you have to do now is just rotate this. Make sure you put the clamp back up to the line you were cutting on, but just rotate this around. Make sure you're in the exact spot you were before. And there you go. I was able to cut pretty much a perfect line. It is a tiny bit jagged because uh, I'm not concentrating, I'm trying to film. But if I put the clamp right back in the right spot, this would have been a little cleaner, but this is what I'm trying to teach you. Either way, this is usable. Uh, the other thing is, a lot of times when you're cutting basically freehand or eyeball, sometimes you might cut this thing and the cut might be on an angle. This is pretty much almost perfectly straight. So that's why I wanted to show you guys how to do that. All right, the next thing that I want to do is I want to add some preload to the turbo. Okay, so because I sell these, I talk to a lot of people about tech support. And because I'm on YouTube doing this work to this car, a lot of people contact me. I've been noticing something about these turbos. There's two clamps, one here and one here that actually holds the turbo together. 
the center is able to rotate or the outsides are able to rotate because this turbo is used on multiple vehicles. So depending on what car it's on, this turbo might need to be oriented in a different way. However, I'm finding those clamps are coming loose and I think there's some sort of seal in there. Those seals seem to be a common problem on these turbos. So if you're finding that you're having performance issues, look around your turbo in here and look for some black soot. I do have a picture which I'll add to the video. But that sooting is basically an exhaust leak. So if you see that, that's most likely your culprit if you have any kind of performance problems, especially if you have uh, some sort of exhaust-related code or maybe a turbo uh, spooling or turbo pressure code, like an underboost situation. If you're leaking exhaust gases and you're smelling it and you're getting an underboost code, most likely you have an exhaust leak. That's not the only reason you'll get that code, but... I'm seeing that as a common thing. Now what I'm going to do before I change the preload is I'm going to break loose the adjustment nut. It's much easier to do it now while it's still on the actuator rod. Now all I'm going to do today is a half turn and I want to see what it does to the car this week while I drive it. To start the car let's see what this thing sounds like now So that was pretty loud now. Uh, by the way, you'll notice that when I shut the car off, I sort of waited like 30 to 45 seconds. The reason I did that is if you have a manual and you can rev the engine like me, your turbo spools up. Well, if you rev the engine, the turbo spools up and you shut the car off, that turbo is still spinning. And when you shut the car off, you're eliminating the oil that feeds the turbo. So what happens is the turbo continues to spin, the car is off, there's no oil getting to it, and it causes bearing damage. I don't know how many of you have turbo problems. A lot of those turbo problems come from two reasons. Driving the car when it's too cold and the oil's too thick, and that turbo's spooling up but it's not getting enough oil when it's really cold, or when you get back from a drive and you have the car at high RPMs and you pull in your driveway and just shut the car off and go in the house, that turbo might still be spinning for an additional minute or two. Some of these turbos have a very low resistance. It, my turbo might still be spinning right now on the inside. That's how low resistance is on modern turbos. So you have to be very careful when you're driving a turbo car. So now I have more preload on my wastegate, which holds more boost in my turbo. Uh, if you guys are curious why my uh, turbocharger blow off noise is so loud, I have a couple different videos on the channel. Just check out the Project Cruise Missile Playlist. That's what I'm calling the car. I think it's very fitting. Uh, one day I would like to have the world's fastest second generation cruise. I say it in quotes because I don't know how much power has to be considered the fastest. You know, for all I know, it could just be a simple 250 horsepower. Uh, from what I can tell, I think 400 horsepower might need to be my goal. If you want to see the entire build series, it'll show all the modifications I've made to the intercooler, to the turbo, uh, I have an HPRV install. Uh, you're going to see this video before this video where I do these modifications, but this will be out after this video that I'm filming literally right now. And uh, 
And if there's any modifications you're looking for, everything will be on my website. And if it's not on my site, message me. It's just because I haven't put it up there yet. Uh, I'm a little bit busy because of editing and actually getting parts to people. So I appreciate you guys checking this video out. And uh, thanks again for all of the comments about the channel, all the comments about, you know, you guys dealing with the same thing I'm dealing with right now. Uh, normally, I'm a little more professional looking, but today I've just sort of been in a mood. It was raining and crappy and with what happened to my dad, and I just haven't been that motivated, but I felt if I just got the car in the garage and turned the camera on, it keeps my mind off everything, and I can enjoy myself. So I love doing this, and you guys love seeing the videos. Thanks again, everyone. I really appreciate it, and have a very nice day.